I'll start the sets up, but then I'm going to sit up through this introduction. So for your child's pose, you've got a couple of choices. You're going to bring your big toes to touch and then either keep your knees narrow or send them wide. So you can adjust your knee position as is comfortable for you. And then as you find yourself melting down towards your mat, your second choice is long straight arms. It's a little stronger in the shoulder or if the shoulders need a little bit more love, bend your elbows and it'll give you a little bit more room for your chest. All right, so a couple of options for you, knees narrow or wide, and then the arms either straight ahead or the elbows bent, sunk down to the side. All right, so you choose, you choose. Find your child's pose. Take a moment to close your eyes. You can rest your head if that feels good. Sink down, feel your body relax. Almost as if you were back in bed where you may have been just a few minutes ago. Good, nice. Most of you have disappeared out of view, so that probably means that you are resting in your child's pose. That's great. Perfect, perfect. Yes, lovely. Okay, so hold that pose a little longer. Start to feel into any sensations in your body. So is anything a little bit tight? Early morning, that tends to be the case. Hips in particular, maybe the shoulders. So if anything's feeling a little bit stiff, know that you can take those options if you need to be a little bit kinder and softer down to the body. So you can absolutely do that. Rest wherever you need to, whenever you need to, whether it's just to have a moment for yourself or just grab a quick water and I will encourage that as we go. Okay, so as we're feeling into the sensations of the body, the breath in particular, the position that you're holding, you may then notice that as you inhale and the ribs are expanding, they might press onto the thighs. As the breath becomes a little bit deeper, maybe it's the chest and the belly that's starting to press onto your thighs. And then as your breath becomes a little bit deeper, maybe you even notice the back of the ribs starting to inflate. And that little stretch through the upper back. Good, lovely. So the inhale, everything lifts up like you're breathing in new life. And the exhale, just let it go, empty out. Soften. Perfect, well done. Okay. Holding your child's pose for a little bit longer, take your right hand and reach it as far ahead of you as you can. Stretch your fingertips for the top end of your mat. You should feel a little stretch with the underside of the body at the front. The next time you breathe in, sweep your right hand to the left edge of your mat. And as your right hand reaches forward, pull backwards on your right hip. So you're creating as much space between the hip and the shoulder as you can. Lovely side body stretch. And then as you breathe out, gently let it go. Come back to your resting position and we'll do the same on the left side. Left fingertips reach as far forward as they can. Maybe the arm lifts up off the mat. And then your next inhale, sweep your left hand to the right edge of your mat and then draw back on your left hip. So you've got that really nice long stretch through the side of the body. Good, awesome, well done. Bring your left hand back to its resting position. Slowly rise up into a little bit of a tabletop. And you're gonna take your right hand and reach it to the ceiling. So press the left hand to the mat, right hand reaches up arms long and vertical, big breath in. And on your exhale, take your right hand underneath your left arm and the arm comes along the mat and the right shoulder eventually comes down to the ground. Good. Trying to keep the hips reasonably square and then if you add pressure to your left hand to try and roll your left shoulder back, you should feel a really nice twist through the body. Good, lovely. All right, add a little bit more pressure to the left hand as you rise up, sweeping through tabletop, breathe in, right hand reaches to the ceiling again, and then bring it back to the mat as you exhale. Good, do the same with the left, left hand reaches up, long line through your arms. On the exhale, sweep the left hand underneath the right until the shoulder comes to touch the mat. And then you're putting a little bit of pressure into your right hand to try and roll your top shoulder over your left. Hip square, enjoying the twist through the body. Good. 
Take a breath in as you rise up again. Left fingertips reach into the ceiling. Perfect. And exhale down to the ground. Well done. Good. All right. Into tabletop now. So bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Your knees underneath your hips. Firm up your midsection. Then we're going to take a couple of rounds of cat and cow. So on the inhale, let the belly drop. Look up. Chest rises forward. The back arches. And on your exhale, allow the head to lower. Round your shoulders. Tuck your tailbone. Good. Let's go again. Breathe in. Allow the belly to drop. Shine the chest forward. Almost like you're pulling your elbows behind you. And breathe out. Push away from the ground, lift your upper back, tuck your tailbone. One more time. A little bigger if you can, breathe in, arch the back and breathe out. Push away, round the back, tuck your tailbone. Nice, well done, good. Okay, we're going to take our left leg behind us and the right arm forwards. And then when you're ready, find your balance and lift up off the floor. So where the heel is level with the hips and the fingertips level with the shoulders. Just hold here for a second. Assess whether your balance is with you this morning. If this is too much of a challenge, you can bring your right hand back down to the mat. But if it's feeling good and you've got both limbs extended, take a breath in to reach. And on the exhale, bring your elbow to your knee underneath your body. Good. Let's go again. Breathe in and reach. Imagine you're trying to create as much space between fingertips and toes. And exhale, crunch. You're using your abdominal muscles to squeeze tight to you. One more time, breathe in, reach it long. And exhale, let it go. Good, well done. Bring the limbs back down to the mat. Give the left wrist a little shake if it needs it. Perfect. Now we're gonna do the opposite side. So the right leg is gonna extend. Left fingertips come forward, find your balance, decide if it's with you, if you're taking this option, or if you need to return your left hand to the mat. Otherwise, breathe in, reach, and breathe, uh, breathe out, bring your elbow to your knee. <laughs> breathe in, reach again. I don't know what combination of words I was going to say then, but it wasn't going to make sense. Breathe out, elbow to knee. Good, one more time, so you can grow a little longer on your inhale, stretch. Nice, breathe out, squeeze tight, curl into a little ball. Good, bring your limbs back down to the mat. Give the right wrist a little shake off now. Okay, you're gonna tuck your toes, lift your hips up into your first downward facing dog of the morning. Create a little bit more space between your hands and feet so you can just walk them a little further apart. And then bend and extend opposite leg as you gradually feel the stretch through the back of the thighs, back of the knees, lower leg and all the way down into the heel. Take a few moments just to bring that movement into your body. Hands are still shoulder distance apart, feet hip distance apart and I'd love you to spread your fingers wide so you can push into your fingers and your palms to draw your chest towards your thighs. Take a lovely big breath in here, let the body rise. And on the out breath, feel the heels sink a little lower. It's okay if they don't touch the ground. Okay, good. This time when we breathe in, we're gonna lower the hips and let the shoulders come over the wrists. So we're gonna roll into a plank position. Come high onto your toes. Pause here for just a moment. Watch that you're not letting the belly sink down to the mat. Keep the belly button pulled in tight. And then push away from your hands, lift the hips up again. Downward facing dog. Good, well done. Let's go again. Breathe in, rock forwards to plank. Keep the body high. Eventually the hips just lower a couple of degrees. Good. And breathe out, push back to your downward facing dog. One more time. Breathe in, rock forwards. Pull the belly button in. Nice. Hold your plank. Awesome little core workout. Lovely. Push back, downward facing dog. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to stay here for three breaths, so if you need a quick sip of water, you can take it. We're about to work into the main section, the flow, so we're going to get the heart pumping a little bit. So breathe with me. Number one, breathe in deep and let it go. You've got time to grab that sip of water. Breath number two, fill up and let it go. Well done. Last time, big breath in and out. Perfect. Okay, take your right leg for me, lift it up and back. 
Bending in at the knee, you're going to keep the heel towards your hips, lift the right knee high. Right. Now as you look between your thumbs, bring your right knee to your chest. The body rocks forward into that plank position and when you're ready, step your foot forward or help it along if you need to. Good, well done. Lower your back knee to the floor, but keep your toes tucked for a moment. On the inhale, shoulders over hips. Hands onto the hips to help with balance. And then see if you can get your hip bones and shoulders facing the front of the mat. There's a little bit of tension as your right heel pulls back, left hip pulls forward, and then you're gonna power up your back leg. Straighten it, lift, and we come into our high lunge, and now the fingertips reach up towards the sky as well. Yeah, good, that's the one, well done. Let the shoulders soften and relax, lift the chest, pull the belly button in, make sure that you're still breathing. And you can be as generous with your front knee bend here as you need to be. So if you're feeling strong, come a little lower where the thigh is parallel, or if you need a little bit more kindness, you can stand up a little taller. Good, well done everybody. Next time you exhale, lower the hands down towards the mat. Land your palms, step back into plank, and let's try a vinyasa. So you can stay on your toes or lower down to your knees. With each option, you just take a little rock forwards, then bend your elbows, lower your chest, breathe out. All the way to the mat. Good, push away from the ground, release your toes. Lift your chest. You've got cobra for the first back bend, or baby cobra with the elbows a little lower. All right, so two choices, but you're gonna lift up on the inhale, or exhale, soften down. Good, well done. Tuck the toes, we're gonna sweep through tabletop before lifting the hips, and we're in downward facing dog again. Well done, walk it out again if you need to. Push into your hands, slowly bring your chest towards your thighs, and then we take our left leg, lifting it up and back, before the left knee bends and the heel comes towards your hips. That's it, good. Left knee to your chest, look between your thumbs, rock your body forwards to plank and step your foot through when you're ready or help along. That's it. Well done, good. Keep the toes tucked but lower your back knee. Shoulders come over the hips, hands onto the hips and we're going to square hips and shoulders to the front of the mat. So the left heel pulling back, right hip pulling forward. So you should have a fairly energetic sensation around the midsection now. Good. Next time you breathe in, push your way with the back leg, lifting up to your high lunge, fingertips reach. Inhale like you can conquer the world, but the shoulders are relaxed. Good, well done. Same thing here, generous bend in the front knee if it's with you this morning. Come as low as feels comfortable to you, but keep the glutes engaged for the hips to be square. Next out breath, lower the hands down towards the mat, landing your palms, step back plank. Same options to come down to the floor, knees or toes, little rock forward, bend the elbows, you can add an option to pause where your elbows brush your wrists, ribs. And then you can breathe in, roll over your toes, lifting your chest for upward facing dog. All right, so now the hips and the knees are off the floor, it's a little stronger for the body, glutes engaged. Good, breathe in, lift the hips up high, piking into your downward facing dog, pushing into your hands, allowing the heels to sink back as you lift your hips up high. Perfect. All right, we're gonna add two more poses this time. Lift your right leg again, up and back. Bend the knee. Bring the heel towards your hips as you lift your right knee high. Right knee to chest. Looking between your thumbs, step through. Good. On your inhale, we lift straight to the, whoa, straight to the high lunge this time. Fingertips up off the floor. Thumbs over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Good, well done. Then rotate your back heel down to the ground, open your hips and shoulders lengthways on your mat, but keep the bend in the front knee, and we're now in warrior two. You've got the same option for that generous front knee bend. Just watch out that you're not leaning into your right side, that the shoulders are over the hips, the arms are long and relaxed. Good. Next time you breathe in, reach forward, look towards your right fingers, flip your palm, then lift your right hand up, lower your left hand. It can land on your thigh, on your hip, on your lower leg. But for your reverse worry, you should be enjoying the sensation of a side body stretch. Roll your right shoulder and elbow back. Look up if it's comfortable. Stretching through the head, keep breathing. 
good. And then come back to warrior two. Spread your arms, catch your breath, rotate your shoulders as you cartwheel down towards the floor, landing your palms, spiral on your back foot, and step back into plank. That's it, good. Same options, knees or toes, rock forward, lower down, bending your arms, squeeze them tight to your body, maybe you pause halfway before rolling over your toes, breathing into lift. Upward facing dog, cobra or baby cobra options for you. Good. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up high. Downward facing dog again. Nice. Same round but on the left side, lift the left leg up and back. Bend the left knee, the heel comes towards your hips. Give the heel a good squeeze towards the hips. Left knee then towards your chest. Step and forward. And then inhale, high lunge, fingertips lift up towards the ceiling. Keeping the hips square here, good. All right, I'm gonna turn my back on you in a moment. Back heel to the floor. The arms reach long into warrior two. The front knee is still bent. Shoulders over the hips, so take care not to lean into the front arm just yet. Shoulders are relaxed as you spread your wings. Now looking towards your left fingers, take a breath in as you reach forward, flip the left palm, left hand up, right hand down, reverse warrior. It's the same thing here, your right hand can land on your hip, your thigh, or your lower leg. Looping your left shoulder and elbow up and back, looking towards your hand if that's comfortable, Front knee still bent. Good. Take a breath in, rise up, warrior two. Arms long, then square your shoulders as you breathe out. Cartwheel down towards the floor. Step back into plank. Knees or toes to lower towards the ground. Here we go, bend the elbows. Breathe in, lift. Nice. Lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog, and you're gonna stay here for three breaths. So use this time to grab a drink of water if you need to. You can pause in your downward facing dog. Perfect. All right, so come back to your breaths. Lift up on the inhale, let it go on the exhale. Allow the heels to sink low. Well done. All right, we've got one more round on each leg with this energetic section. So remember, you can take a pause when you need to. Modify the options, it's absolutely your choice. We go right leg again, lifting up and back, long line before you bend your knee, heel to hips. Right knee in towards your chest, looking between your thumbs, step forward. Good. Inhale, lift up, high lunge, fingertips rise. Exhale, back heel to the floor. Stretch your arms long, warrior two. Beautiful. Breathing in, reach forward, flip your right palm. Right hand lifts, left hand lowers, reverse warrior. Lovely side body stretch through the right. Good, nice, and come back to warrior two and hold it here for just a moment. Wriggle your back foot in a little closer, two or three little wriggles before you straighten your right leg. Good, well done. Turn your palms to face the same way that you are. You're going to kink your hips back, take a little reach forward, and then tilt your body lovely and long into triangle pose. So you've got a couple of options here. You can rest your hand lightly on your shin, or hover the hand in tidy. Or if the range is with you, maybe the fingertips reach down towards the mat. But with each one, imagine you're leaning against a wall. So the top shoulder in particular has a tendency to loop forward. So this time, think about pressing it back. Good, you can draw a little bit of a hamstring stretch at the same time. Side body stretch here through the upper edge of the body, but you're working the strength because it's holding you in position as well. So keep breathing. You've got the option to look up towards your left hand if it's comfortable, if it doesn't affect your balance too much. Good, well done. All right, next time you breathe in, lift the body ever so slightly. Then square your shoulders to the front edge of your mat. Allow your hips to square and rotate your back foot so that now both toes are facing the front edge of the mat. There you go. Good. If you need to bring the feet in a little narrower, you can. Lift up tall as you breathe in. Then pipe at the hips, bending at the waist, rolling forwards, hands on the hips just to guide you. You'll find yourself in pyramid pose. So similar to triangle in that you've got the shape between your legs and the ground but we've changed the angle of the body. 
can keep your hands on your hips or reach them out behind you if that feels good. If the right leg is feeling a little tight, you can take a little bend into the right knee as well. We're aiming to flatten the body horizontally. Good. Just tuck the chin ever so slightly so you're extending the crown of the head. Keep breathing, I know it's a strong pose. Good, well done. All right, rise the fingertips up, bend your front knee. We'll come back to a high lunge, a little shortened stance. That's it, then exhale, release the hands down to your mat. Step back plank. You might need to walk the feet a few inches behind you. That's it, before we lower down to the floor. So exhale, bend your elbows, knees or toes. Lift up, inhale. Upward facing dog, cobra or baby cobra. And then pike up. Lifting the hips, downward facing dog. All right, one final round. You're doing awesome. Left leg, up and back. Bend the knee, open the hips up, bring the heel towards your hips. Then the left knee to your chest. Looking up, lifting up and stepping through. Good, well done. Breathe in as we rise up for high lunge, the body and fingertips lift. Perfect. Exhale, back heel down, hips and shoulders square, stretch your arms long in warrior two. And then next in breath, reach forward, flip the palm, lift your left hand up, lower the right hand, find your balance, reverse warrior. Still got that lovely bend through the front knee, right? Opening up the chest and shoulders towards the ceiling, and then come back to warrior two. Pausing here for a second. Heel toe the back foot in a little closer. Straighten your front leg, turning your palms the opposite way now. And then you're gonna kink your hips back as you reach forward and slide into your triangle. So think about your arms vertical, reaching the right up towards the ceiling. Left hand either hovers, lightly rests on the shin, or if the range is with you, it can come all the way down to the ground. If anything, where the hand has hovered, it's a little stronger, even though it might not look as bending, that's okay. And you can look up if it doesn't affect your balance. Good. Lift the body up a degree as you square your hips and shoulders to the front edge of the mat. Rotate your back foot so that both toes now face in the front. That's it. If you need a little shuffle, that's okay. Hands on the hips so you can check the hips are square. Take a big breath in as you lift your chest. And then tilting from the hips, slowly start to lean forward and down. Good. Finding your range, there's some lovely intense hamstring stretch this one. Either keep the hands on the hips or extend them out behind you, it just helps the back to firm up and flatten up. Little tuck of the chin, extending the crown of the head. Pyramid pose. Good, well done everybody. Take a breath in, bend your left knee, fingertips up towards the ceiling. Nice, and then when you exhale, lower down. Plant your hands, step back into plank. Remember, you're just gonna to need to step your feet a few inches further back. And then as you exhale, bend in the elbows, lower down. Lift up and breathe in. And then lift your hips up. Downward facing dog. Three big breaths here. Slowing the breathing, slowing the heart rate. So again, you've got time to have a drink. You can even bring your knees down to the mat, take a rest in child's pose if you need it. Add pressure to the hands and fingertips, draw the chest towards the thighs, lower the heels towards the floor, and then just wrap the lower ribs in so you've got firmness through the midsection as well. Good, well done. Okay, we're going to make our way feet towards our hands. So as you start to lift up, you can either walk your toes towards your fingertips, or if you want, take a little knee bend and hop. Toes together, <laughs> and some nice bodies out there. Toes together, ankles together, knees together. And then allow the upper body to hang loose. We've got a nice little forward fold here. So if the hamstrings are tight, keep a bend through your knee. If the hamstrings allow, you can extend the legs. But the upper body has no tension. The arms can hang loose. You can nod or shake your head freely. The gaze between your knees so the head is really nice and relaxed. Good, lovely little forward folds there. Perfect. All right, we're gonna come up to a halfway lift now. So the back lifts and flattens as we breathe in. Loop your shoulders back, firm your shoulder blades onto your back. 
drawing the lower belly in so your ribs, lower ribs are wrapped in and you've got lovely length through your back. So the half lift, still stretching the hamstrings but it's just a little stronger. Speaking of strength, bend your knees, sink your hips back, reach your fingertips behind you and then as you look up, lift your arms up in front of you and we're in chair pose. Good, well done. Use an arm range which is comfortable for your shoulders. So you might be able to lift your arms a little higher, just watch that it doesn't compromise your lower back. Still think about that firm middle, and that slight tilt of the pelvis, or your arms might reach in front of you, it's a little kinder for the shoulders. So you've got a few ranges to work through. Next time you breathe out, let it go. Return to your forward fold, arms long and relaxed. There you go, head hanging loose. Enjoying the hamstring stretch again. Good, really nice. Halfway lift as you breathe in. So the back comes flat and long, shoulder blades press onto your back, lower ribs wrap in, belly button draws in tight. And then sink the hips back, weight into your heels, fingertips behind you for a moment. Breathe in, look up, reach forward, chair pose. That's it, nice. So if you wanna challenge yourself, you can bend a little deeper into your chair, sink the hips a little lower. Only if that feels good this morning. And then slowly, slowly start to straighten your legs. Lifting your fingertips up, take your time. Slowly come to full standing, arms overhead. Once your legs are straight, you're gonna look up towards your thumbs, reach them behind you, lifting the chest. And on the exhale, soften your arms by your sides. Take the hands into your lower back. Draw your elbows behind you. Tuck your tailbone, soften your knees, and start to roll backwards if that feels good. Standing back bend. So you can allow the shoulders to soften back. As your elbows pull behind you, the hips will shift slightly forward. Lifting the chin only if that's comfortable, if those still allows you to breathe naturally. Thighs engaged, abdominal muscles engaged. Good. Tighten the abs, lift your shoulders up over your hips and then release the arms down. Give the shoulders a little loop here if that feels good. Well done. I'm gonna to come to face sideways on. We're gonna do a little bit of balance work. Now I'm on a soft mat on a squishy carpet, all right? So don't judge me if my balance is appalling. Soft surfaces make it a lot more challenging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left leg first. Lift your toes, spread them wide so you've got a really nice strong foundation. Hands on your hips if you wish or down by your sides. You're going to start to lift your right heel up off the floor. Let me do the same side as you. The right heel up off the floor. Knee starts to lift. And your knee is going to come in line with your hips. So you've got about a 90 degree bend on that right leg. Good. The foot that's lifted, you can either point your toes, flex your foot, or halfway in between. Nice. All right, lifting up tall, lift the chest, draw the ribs in. You're going to take your left hand across your right knee. That's it, good. And then slowly start to rotate your shoulders towards the right. So taking your time, if you need to toe tap down, you can do that. Don't take balances too seriously. They're hard work enough as it is. Make it a little bit of fun if you can. Good. So the knee still faces the front as the shoulders start to rotate. If you wish, you can extend your right hand behind you. This opens up the chest a little bit more, adds a bit more challenge to your balance. If you want even more, Start to look towards your right thumb. So know that when you rotate your head, it makes the balance a little more challenging. Good, well done, well done. All right, slowly make your way back to center. Toe tap down if you need to. Keep the leg lifted if you can. This time the right hand comes to the inside of your left knee. Left hand to the hip. And we're gonna to start to take the knee wide. That's it. Hips and shoulders still face forward. 90 degree bend through the knee. Excellent, really nice. So use the natural range that's available in your hip here. If you wish, you can untuck your right fingertips, pushing them against the knee, and maybe even extend your left arm. That's it. Still breathing, chest up. If you want extra challenge, look towards your left thumb. Remember that when you move your head, it makes the balance a little tougher. <laughs> yes. Good, well done. Bring everything back into center. Step it down, shake it out. So, 
For me, the foot that I'm standing on, that's had a really good workout because it's a soft surface. The calf is feeling it a little bit, but also the leg that you've had lifted, the hips have had a little workout. So give those muscles a rub if you need to. Not done, now we're gonna do the same on the other side. So this time your right toes, lift them up, spread them wide as you take your weight over your right foot. Hands again, either by your side or on your hips, whichever choice you prefer. And as you find your balance, start to lift your left knee up to the height of your hips. Same option, you can point the toe, flex the foot or go halfway in between. Good, nice. All right, right hand across your left knee, just hook the fingers behind the knee joint, lift up tall with the chest, and start to rotate around towards the left. Good, so take your time, take your gaze with you. If you move slow and controlled, you're more likely to stay balanced. The left arm can extend behind you, lifting and opening the chest a little further. Maybe you even take your gaze towards your left thumb. All right, so okay, keep the body nice and tall. Keep squeezing, feel the muscles reacting to the change in posture. Slowly return to center. Toe tap down if you need, or keep the knee lifted if you can. This time it's your left hand to the inside of your left knee, right hand to right hip. Take a breath in, lift tall, and then slowly take your knee out towards the left side. Good, well done, nice. Again, using the natural range available within the hip. Keep the body tall, watch out for any swings and shakes. If you want to untuck your left fingertips, you can push them against the left knee. Maybe you choose to extend the right hand. That's it, well done. Good, if you want that extra little challenge, look towards your thumb as well. Yeah, you've got this. Fantastic, all right, everything into your midline, nice and slow. Step it down, shake it out, well done. So give the feet a little wriggle, rub the hips if they're feeling tight, perfect. We're gonna make our way down onto the mat, taking a seat in preparation for boat pose. Grab a sip of water if you need to, adjust your screen. The rest of the practice is gonna be nice and low down now, no more standing work. Good, all right. So here I am sideways onto you, my toes are pointing towards the front edge of the mat. Lift up tall, find your sit bones, loop your shoulders back, and take a little tuck of the fingertips behind the thighs or around the back of the knee. That's it. With the breath in and a little lean back, you'll notice your heels start to lift up off the floor. And then slowly, either with one leg at a time or both legs together, you're gonna lift your shins so they come parallel with the ground. Perfect, all right, let me give you some options. So you can keep this as a toe tap exercise, lowering down towards the ground, returning it to your parallel position. Or if you wish, take it the opposite way, extend either one leg or both at a time. If you're choosing the extension, the front of the thigh is getting a little bit of a workout. Those muscles contract to straighten your leg. And you get a little bit of a hamstring stretch going on as well. So two options for you, either to toe tap down, testing your balance, or to lift up. And with each of those exercises, the abdominal muscles and hip flexors also getting a little bit of a workout. Checking again that you're not slouching that you're still sitting up lovely and tall, almost lifting your collarbone towards the ceiling. Yes, good, well done, well done. All right, pause where the shins are parallel with the ground and either keep the fingertips where they are or extend them ahead alongside your shins. Again, check that the collarbone is lifted, that you're still breathing, still smiling even maybe. <laughs> this is where it's a good job that your cameras are all on mute so I can't hear you cursing me. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> All right, gently release your toes down towards the floor. Roll forwards, shoulders over knees. Give yourself a squeeze here and let go. Well done. All right, we're gonna roll over onto our tummies. So you can get there any way that's comfortable for you. If you need a little moment to stretch out into child's pose, you can. Lower the hips down towards the ground and then bring your shoulders underneath your, oh, sorry, your shoulders over your elbows. There we go, good. <laughs> Lovely, okay. So your forearms are parallel and your fingertips are pointing to the front of your mat. That's it, good. Okay, point your toes for me, send them as far behind you as you can. 
And when you point your toes, you might notice the top of your feet push into the mat. Your calf muscles engage. And then take that energy, bring it up, firm up your thighs, squeeze your thighs in towards your midline. You might even notice that your kneecaps lift up off the ground. Good. Continue that energy journey. Tuck your tailbone, pull your hip bones into the mat. Your glutes should engage. Nice. And then think about pushing your elbows into the mat so you'll lift a little taller with your chest. As you lift taller, try and pull your elbows behind you. So now the back muscles start to fire up as well. Good, this is sphinx pose. You've got the added option, if you wish, to maybe elevate your feet off the floor. It's a little stronger for the hamstrings, glutes, and lower back. So if that option doesn't feel good for you, lower the feet to the floor, still concentrate on pulling your elbows back and drawing your chest through your arms. So a few options here for you to pick from. Good, another strong pose, so please make sure that you're still breathing. Lovely, just a few more seconds. Nice, all right, release your elbows out towards the side. Soften your body down towards the mat. When you feel the tension and release from your back, just rock the hips side to side, bring a little bit of movement. That's it, good, lovely, well done. All right, we're now gonna flip over, roll 180 onto your back. Lovely, lovely. Good. Bring your heels up towards your hips so you can tickle the back of your ankles with your fingertips. Your toes are now facing the other edge of your mat. Little gap between your ankles and knees. And you're going to pull your belly button in, drawing your lower back in towards the mat. Your arms are palms down alongside your hips. Little tilt of the hips, see if you can lift the hips up off the floor. Slowly, slowly. Good. Lift a little higher, your lower back comes off the ground. Start to push into your heels, lift a little higher, mid back off the ground. Pushing into the heels and maybe a little bit into the arms, the upper back lifts up off the floor and you'll find yourself in bridge pose. Good, well done. So another exercise working the hamstrings and especially the glutes. If you find any discomfort in your lower back, Come back to your belly button, draw it in, and you'll get that little pelvic tilt again to keep the midsection muscles fired up. Otherwise, with a big push in the glutes, sometimes you can just overarch in the lower back and it can get a little bit fatigued. So belly button in, still a nice cue for you to think about. And while you hold your bridge, watch that your knees haven't started to collapse out to the side. Little inner thigh activation keeps the knees squeezing together. And if you wish, you can bring your shoulders underneath your body. Maybe your hands come to touch, and if that's the case, interlace your fingers, pull your knuckles down towards your ankles, giving your chest that little extra lift. Nice. Breathing still natural and rhythmical, lift your chin, give your neck some space. If you took the option to interlace your fingers, gently walk your shoulders back out, and then roll in from your upper back, slowly down towards your mid back, then your lower back. Little tilt of the pelvis and eventually the hips come down towards the ground. Good, well done. When your body is softened to the mat, swish your knees gently side to side. Perfect. All right, we're gonna to start to slow things down now. Extend for me your left leg along the mat. Lifting your right so your toes start to reach towards the ceiling. Gently take a hold of the back of your thigh for a right hamstring stretch. If this is a little strong, you can bend your left knee so that your knee is up towards the ceiling, the foot's a little closer to the hip, but if it feels good, let the left leg extend. A right hamstring stretch. So I'll invite you to close your eyes now, or just lower your gaze, and bring your attention back to the sensations within the body breath starts to slow and the body starts to relax, you might benefit a bit more from the stretch. Gently start to pull your right knee a little closer towards you, allowing the knee to bend. Right knee comes in towards your chest and eventually the heel down towards your hips. Take your fingers now to the top of the shin, give your knee a little squeeze tighter towards you and then shuffle towards the right edge of your mat. So you can bend your left knee and use that to guide you as you wriggle over. Keep your left hand on your right knee. 
the right arm can extend out towards the side and then gently guide the knee across your body towards the left. So that little shuffle of the hips now means that the hips have space to roll if that feels comfortable. Shoulders are staying grounded. Maybe the right knee comes to the ground, maybe it doesn't, it's okay if it doesn't. See what your hips allow. Nice little twist through the torso, stretching the muscles of your upper back. Heart rate and breathing continue to slow. All right, slowly roll back to center, right knee comes over the chest again. Extend it along your mat, and you can shuffle your hips towards the left hand side now. Right leg grounded and long, left leg lifts towards the ceiling. Take a hold behind the left thigh as you guide your leg into your hamstring stretch. Same option here, you can bend your right knee if it's a little bit kinder on the left hamstring or extend it if that feels good. And lifting the toes up. Nice. Gently start to pull your left knee a little closer towards your chest, bending the knee as you go. And then eventually let the lower leg come down. Swap the hands around so you're holding the top of the shin as you squeeze your leg towards you. Right hand on your left knee, left arm extends, and then guide the knee across the body, opposite direction. If you're practicing with a neighbor, be mindful of their space. Try not to crash into them. And use that lovely rotation of the hips, twisting through your torso, stretching the muscles for the back. And it's the same thing, maybe the knee touches the ground, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's just the foot or the leg can float off the ground. And with the left arm extended, the shoulders help to stay stable. Good. Slowly return to center, bringing your left knee above your chest. Shuffle your hips back into a central position and then extend your left leg. Take any last minute wriggles that you need to. We're about to end in our final relaxation. So if you need to lift the knees to the chest again, wriggle the hips, make space for the shoulders. And then eventually, as your legs extend, allow the toes to fall out to the side. Palms by your hips, face up. Eyes closed and shoulders relaxed. So all the hard work is done now. You can be really smug to know you've done your yoga practice and that set you up for the rest of the day. And as you're breathing in that fresh life into the invigorated muscles now, I'm just gonna leave you with a little thought. I want you to remember that you are enough. Whatever you do today, whatever challenges you face, you are enough. I mean, let's be honest, if anything, you're probably overqualified, but we're gonna start the day humble. You are enough. And we've got a few moments to enjoy this final Shavasana. So take the time to tune into the body again. The areas that you noticed that were maybe a little bit tight or a little stiff at the start of the practice. Do they feel the same now? Or are they a little bit looser, a little bit more relaxed? If you're feeling a little bit lethargic at the start of the practice, now that you've got your body moving, hopefully you feel energized and ready to face the day. And just remember that whatever it is that you are doing today, you are enough.
can stay in your Shavasana as long as you wish. I'm slowly going to make my way towards the screen so don't get a fright when you see my face. <laughs> if you're ready, you can slowly roll yourself onto your side. 